Hello everybody, today I'd like to show you how to set up the Edimax wireless repeater. So in this video, um, I've written up a few instructions that you need to follow to set up the repeater in the most um, efficient way, and I've put them in the description below. I've also got them written here on the video so you can read them, and so I can discuss them as we go along. So the first thing you need to do uh, with your Edimax access point, once you get out of the box, is screw in the antenna, and after that, you need to make sure that it's got factory default settings on it. So if you, of course, if you've just taken out the box, then it'll have factory default settings on it. But if you fiddled with it a little bit, or you're, or you're not sure, then to get it to factory default settings, you just need to plug it into the mains. You need to hold the reset button on the back for 20 seconds um, until the power light starts flickering. And after this, you need to press the reset button again for about 5 seconds to start the WPS until the WLAN light comes on then you'll have an Edimax with factory default settings on it. After this, you need to make sure your Edimax is obviously plugged into the mains, um, and also via an Ethernet cable connected directly to your computer. And that's um, the first step that you need to do. Um, the second step that you need to do, uh, before you carry on doing anything else with the Edimax, is you need three bits of information about your current computer and router setup. You need the IP address of your router, you need the subnet mask, and you need the DHCP range. So now I'm going to show you how to get these three bits of information. It's not a problem at all on any computer, it's easy to get. Um, so to get the IP address and the subnet mask, you need to go in to command prompt. So just type in CMD. You need to open up uh, command prompt. And then type in ipconfig and press enter. And now you need to look under wireless LAN adapter wireless network connection. So this one here. And um, the default gateway here is what I'm going to refer to as the IP address of your router, and here is the subnet mask. So these are the two first bits of information that you need to get. And now what you need is the DHCP range. So in order to get this, you need to log on to your router. So you need to type in the IP address of your router into a, or into a web browser. So that's what we're going to do now. So it's 192.168.1.254. So it's 192.168.1.254. And then you just type this into any web browser and it will come up with a home page for your router. So I'm using a BT Home Hub 2, so this is what my home page looks like, but it doesn't matter if you're using a Netgear router or Orange or any router, it doesn't matter. Um, the settings are all um, similar. So what you need to do now is you need to go into settings. You need to type in your um, settings password. If you've never fiddled with settings on the router before, then the settings password should just be the default password, which is given on the back of your router. Um, if you have changed your password, but you've forgotten it, um, then what you need to do is you need to reset your router to factory default settings. And to do this, um, it varies slightly from router to router, but normally there's a little button on the side that you can only access with a pin or a very sharp pencil, and you just need to hold that for a while until the lights start flashing, and then um, that's how you factory default reset it. It's slightly different on every router, so you need to check your router. And then once you've reset your router to factory default settings, then you'll obviously you'll have the default password, which is always uh, printed on the back of the router. So I'm just going to log on now. Okay, and now you need to go to advanced settings, continue to advanced settings, home network. Now, obviously, if you've got a different router than me, this might take some uh, searching to find. But basically, you're looking for the DHCP range. So these two bits of information should confirm what you already have written down. And your DHCP range is given right here, so the start address and the end address. Um, these are This is basically the, the range um, of addresses that the router can allocate to computers connected on the network. So in my case, the range is 192.168.1.64 all the way up to 237. So, um, yeah, so anything, any address between that range um, can be allocated. And so, um, in order to set up the Edimax, which is going to come later, you need to give the Edimax an IP address which is outside of this range, but we'll come to that later. So make sure you have a note of this, this, and this, this DHCP range. Okay, that's step two. Now step three. Um, you need to start the setup wizard from the CD. So you basically, you go to your CD. Um, and you just run it. You start, you go to setup wizard. You set your language. 
Okay, then this is the first screen, so it's going to be searching for an access point. Um, obviously in my case I've already got the Edimax repeater set up, so I haven't got it plugged in directly via Ethernet cable to my computer, so it's um, not finding any access point. But this is fine. Um, but um, if your Edimax router is directly connected to your computer via an Ethernet cable, and it's switched on, directly connected to the mains, then it should show up here as probably the only one and you click on it and click next. Now if this doesn't happen and you think you've followed all the steps and it still says there's no AB found, um, which does happen from time to time, it's an inconsistency with the Edimax um, setup process, uh, what I suggest you do is just disconnect it from the computer from the Ethernet cable and just leave it plugged into the mains um, anywhere, anywhere in the house um, <coughs> for about a week or so. Just, just plugged into the mains so it's switched on just um, um, for about a week, for a few days, and then come back and try this process again, and it should it should work. Okay, so once you have your access point here and it shows up, you click on it, you click next. And now you go to step um, six. It'll ask for the username and password of the Edimax. Now, since we're starting with an Edimax with factory default settings, the username will be admin and the password will be one two three four and of course it's given on the underside of the Edimax. And now um, click next and we come to the most important screen um, which is assigning an IP address for your Edimax. So select manually assign an IP address and then for the IP address field this is where you need to provide the desired IP address of the Edimax. So this has to be outside of your DHCP range because if you're going to assign a static IP address to your Edimax you don't want any address conflicts with your router. So, for example, in my case, um, my DHCP range is from 0.64 to 0.237. So I've just chosen the next one along, the next number along, 238. I haven't got any other um, <coughs> um, static IP addresses aside on my network, so it's quite a simple network in this particular case. So I can just assign the next number along. But note that usable IP addresses, IP address sections, only range from 1 to 2 by 4. So if your DHCP range goes to, two four, goes to 254, then you can't do 255 because that's not allowed. So then I'd go the one underneath the lowest one. <coughs> and yeah, you just need to pick a static IP address that isn't going to conflict with your router. And then for the next bit, for the subnet mask, you need to provide the same subnet mask that your router uses. So that's this in my case, and this is pretty common. And for the gateway, you need to provide the IP address of your current router. So that's the default gateway. This is um, the, yeah, the gateway that the Edimax uses to access the internet. So in my case, it's this. And then after you've filled in this, click Next. Select Repeater Mode, because we want a wireless repeater. Click Next. And for the identification name, you just type in whatever name you like or leave it as the default. This is just a name that will show up when you're searching for wireless networks. For example, in my case, um, I've named it Edimax Repeater, so it shows up as Edimax Repeater on my wireless connections. It also asks you if you want to set up security for the Edimax. You can do this, however, if your router is already password secured and there isn't much need. Um, I've never, never bothered with this, <coughs> or very rarely. If you're if you're in a quite an isolated environment, then it's normally not necessary. And then click next, and then it will give you a list of wireless routers. So this is the signal that you you're wishing to repeat. So you select um, your wireless router. So you know the name of this because this is what you you're normally connecting to the internet with um, up until this point. Um, so in my case, it was the BT Home Hub 2 Q46N. So you see it's got a signal strength of one bar, and I'm repeating it up to a strength of four bars. So this is what this is my router, and this is my repeater. So select that and make a note of what security type it uses. This will be in the right-hand column of the table. So for BT Home Hubs, it's the WPA2AES security type, but make a note of what it is, whether it's a WEF or whatever. And if it hasn't got any security, then um, don't worry about it. Um, in the next step, you'll be asked to type in the wireless key for your router, if your router has a wireless key, if it's secured. So this is just the password that you used um, to access the internet previously. And then click next. If it's um, the default password, then it's, it'll also be on the back of your router. Okay, and now the next screen is the summary screen. 
Um, so definitely make a note of all the details on the summary screen and double check them and make sure they're all exactly what you want because this is the last screen that you'll see on the setup before it saves all the data to the Edimax and reboots the Edimax. So um, at this point, if, if you see that anything's incorrect, then go back in the setup process and change it and make sure it's, make sure it's all right. So make sure that you're, you've assigned um, a valid IP address for your Edimax, that you've got the good gateway, you've got the IP, for the gateway you've got the IP address of your router, and they're on the same subnet mask, you've got the name that you want, the security that you want, and then click finish. And now um, it'll say saving to the Edimax, and then it'll reboot your Edimax. And wait for this to all settle until it says congratulations, the setup is complete. And now what you need to do is unplug and disconnect the Edimax from the computer. Take the Edimax to your desired location. So somewhere in between your router and your laptop or computer is ideal, somewhere in the middle and in quite an open space, so not surrounded by thick concrete walls or anything, but just use your common sense for this. And plug the Edimax um, in at that location, <coughs> um, and that should be it. Now to check that everything's working um, properly, then what I suggest you do as a first state step is to just um, ping the IP address that you've given to your Edimax. So ping 192.168.1. Um, what was it? 238, I think it was. So the yep, yeah, this is the IP address that I gave to my Edimax, and as you can see on command prompt, <coughs> I've pinged this IP address, and I'm getting packets of data back, which means that it's working correctly, and then there's an established connection to the router. And um, that's basically what you're looking for. So this will show up. This will show up immediately when a connection is established, and then after a while, it should also show up in your wireless networks. So then you just select um, your Edimax and whatever name you've given it, and click connect. And that should be it. And then you should be connected to your Edimax, and you should be enjoying a nice, stronger signal and um, increased range. Now, um, as an extra step. Um, to increase the reliability of your Edimax, um, I have uh, been on the phone to um, Edimax customer services, and they have admitted that there is a um, slight issue with channel synchronization on the Edimax. Um, and basically, what this means is the routers, by default, are set up with automatic channel selection. So the channel is the frequency at which the router is emitting, emitting the signal. And by default, the channel selection is on automatic. So what, it, what this means is that the router automatically chooses the strongest channel to emit at. So when I came to the screen for the first time, I saw the channel selection was on automatic, and it chose channel 7 because channel 7 was the strongest. So what I did is I changed it so that channel 7 is fixed, so that it's always going to be emitting channel 7. Um, and now, what I, this is what I suggest you do. Um, you change this so it's fixed to the strongest channel it was at, and then you log on to your um, AEMAX repeater, with 1.238, so the password obviously is all default. Um, you go to basic setting, and you change the channel number also to, to whichever channel number you, you have as the strongest one here, so in my case it's 7. So now the router is emitting at channel 7 and it's fixed and the Edimax is expecting channel 7 as well. So there won't be any issues with um, channel synchronization. This is just something that I've noticed. Obviously routers, um, like they normally don't change channels too often but and you might not even have a problem with this at all. But I have and um, this is one way of just making the setup more stable, more reliable for the future. So, those are all the steps. Um, I've put links to the official documentation and uh, further tips that you can find on Amazon in the description below. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it helps. And if you have any more questions, just don't hesitate to leave a comment. And good luck with the setup procedure.